okay? And the people that are taking a long time, I have a feeling that there's S or C in you. <laughs> people that are done already are probably more DIs. Uh, okay. Where do you want us to write it? <laughs> you guys know, people were like, gee, you didn't say where to write it. Because I don't care. I'm sorry, I don't. Okay. So we talked, um, we're going to go ahead and flip open, open your book uh, to page eight. The new book. The new book. Now this is a little bit more historical background. Uh, we talked a little bit very broadly about this, but uh, you know, we already talked a little bit about Hippocrates and, uh, and the, the four temperaments and all that. But then uh, William Marston, obviously we talked about, I think I said Walter, I'm sorry. Uh, I knew that, William Marston. Um, and then Dr. John Greer uh, came up with uh, the first assessment that we're going to look at uh, back in uh, 1977. Uh, and then eventually, uh, there's a staff psychologist at Dallas Theological Seminary, Dr. Miles Carbonell, who designed the first of kind combination personality and a faith-based profile, which is overall what you guys have. Now, we're just looking at the disc portion right now, but he's the one that brought a lot of this together. And so, um, you know, we... We owe a lot to these pioneers because without it, we wouldn't have this. And I tell you, I think you're going to love this assessment as you take it because it's really beneficial. So um, flip over to your next page, which is page nine. Um, and then the folks that have the, se the separate one there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to push you guys through this. Okay. Now I mean that, and that literally I'm going to push you um, because. Oftentimes, in, in times of stress, is when our personalities come out more. So I recognize already that some of you like to process this, okay? And I'm going to make it difficult. I, I apologize up front. I'm not doing it to be mean, okay? So what we're going to look at uh, is this questionnaire. You'll see that there are groupings of four questions. You guys see that, how there are black lines around four? Well, the goal is not to answer all four of these. What you're going to do is you're going to take two of these groupings, and that's how you're, what you're going to answer. Now, look at the top on the right with this example. It says M and L, then the example. You see what I'm looking at? Uh, it says there's a, an X uh, under kind or beside kind, nice, and caring, and then there's an X beside demanding and asserting. You guys see where I'm talking? Now, you see that that's a grouping of four questions, but they've only answered two. One was an M, which is the most like you. It doesn't mean it's the only like you, but you're looking at the grouping of words. This is most like me. Then the L is what's least like you. Doesn't mean that there may be something that's like, well, I do that. It's the least, all right? Now, you're not going to answer all four if, in a grouping. If you do, it's wrong, and nobody wants to be wrong. It won't work, okay? How many of these in each grouping are you going to answer? Two. One M and one L, okay? And I'm going to walk around a little bit, make sure we're doing it okay. Um, and I'm going to get and give you about 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds. I'm going to watch. You have to read them as quickly as you can, and I want gut responses. And I know my C's and my S's are going, I don't like you've got responses. Okay? So, you, re you guys feel comfortable? Yeah. Are you ready? ready? All right, let me get my timer up here. Come on. Set. All right. I'm going to give you about 15 seconds for the first group. All right, we're going to come back together now. Um, so, if you haven't drawn your lines, draw your lines. Who came back? Okay, so there, let me put it this way. There are two, the, the two graphs you're looking at. Now, you'll see they're actually reverses of each other, right? The L's, all the large numbers are at the bottom. The M, all the large numbers are at the top. And that's how they get this. It's really fascinating uh, because it's going to tell you two different things. Now, the first graph, the M graph, it says this is what's expected of me. Now, this is not what we call a 360, a 360 degree assessment, meaning others have not taken this on you. Therefore, another way to say this, this is my perception of what I think is expected of me, right? Because you don't know that other people would agree with you on this, but this is what you think people expect of you. 
And we call this oftentimes our mask, especially if it's different than the second graph. Okay, the second graph is, this is me. So in my most comfortable position, when I'm most at ease, this is who I am. Also, when I'm in the most stress, this is how I'm going to react. And I kind of force that by us going very quickly through this. When I, this, is, this is who I am. And how many people's graphs matched uh, exactly the M and the L, that this, they were the exact same thing? The, the, Pretty close. Well, I actually forgot to say one piece of this too. You see that dotted line? That above the line is what we call a dominant trait. Below the line is a non-dominant trait. So what I want you to do is um, circle at the top where it says DISC any that are above the line on both of those graphs. Circle um, the letter above it. So if it's above it, if you only have one, if it's an I, just circle the I. If you have more than one, just circle all three or four, one, two, however many there may be. Okay? Who came back under the mask that this is expected of me with one above the midline is what we call that? Eric, you did two? Okay. Anybody else come with just one? Okay. Um, do you mind sharing which one was above the midline? S. S. So what that's saying then is that what you think people expect of you is for you to be of an S type of personality. Okay. Would you agree with that? Yes. Good, that's what, you, that's what you wrote, so that's good that you agree with it. But yeah, so that's what you expect, okay? You think people expect of you. Uh, Donald, how about for you? C, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I. I. High I, right? Oh, yeah. Yep, Sorry. and nothing else up there, okay? How many people had two things? Yeah, okay. Could you share which, which two you had? Uh-huh. It was an I and an S. I and an S. Okay, Charlie, how about for you? DC. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> who, who was surprised by that for her? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you, two? Uh, DC. DC. Okay. And how about you? Okay. I S. I S. Okay. So now this is what you think people expect of you. And so we're going to look at what these blends mean here in a moment. Now, the second graph, the L, do the same thing if you haven't done that. Who only had, who had the same? You had the same DC? Okay, so when you have two graphs that basically have both above the midline, and they're the same, that means that your mask is, you get, this is who I am. And it's very common for Ds, especially, uh, which is what you said you were. How, how high, was your D the same on both or close to it? Okay. But then yeah. it, it only goes up to five. Almost. Right. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't really know how to compare that. Yeah, so, but they're just looking at this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right by exactly. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the I and me saying, are they close when you just look at it? But I love that. that that's that DC right there. Perfect. Okay, good. Um, others that uh, were the same? Yeah. Two, I have three above. Uh huh. You know, two of them are the same. Two of the same? And so you, had, you added a third and the M? Yeah. Which, I, which is your third that you added? Uh, I added a C. I added from the, from the uh, M graph, mm -hmm. and then I added a C to the L graph. And so what that's saying is you have a bit of a mask that you sometimes will wear, where you actually have a lot more detail and process than you care to let some people see, which is fascinating because what did you say earlier, right? You know, I'm at a point in my life that I really want to have some of those things consistent. <laughs> Right? So you add that C in with the S, and that really makes sense. And, and just, you, you just don't let as many people see that task side of you as you do your relationship side. But you do have some task. Again, looking at your graphs, right? Um, you agree? Good. That's good. And so with that, what I, this is what I love about Uniquely You over some of the other assessments I've taken, is it gives you both of these graphs. Right? It doesn't just say, yes, this is what you are. It first will tell you that you, know, you can, uh, one, that, and just looking at the M graph, that you may be multiple, you may be a blend, but also that you're going to have maybe this mask that you're wearing. This is the, hey, I'm not sure I'm safe sharing who I am, which again is why perceptions can be dangerous, right? Because if we try, start trying to perceive and you have a mask that you wear, 
that could be a bad thing for people that don't get to know you well. Or it could be a really good thing until they get to know you well. And they're like, oh. Yeah, and a lot of times... Um, and you guys are too. Well, he's a DI, so I'm a DC. Yeah. Then that task side of, of my lovely bride comes out and we get tired. No, it's kidding. <laughs> and yet they both have C though. Because yeah. he is a he doesn't show the C, but the C's there. Yeah. It, which is higher for you, John Lou? Is your D or your C higher? In the In the M. Oh in the M? Uh-huh. The D's higher. Is D's your highest, right? In both of them. Yeah. And so what, even though both are dominant. I always, what I've found with talking to people that that one that's the highest is what we, what I like to kind of call it the main dominant. Like, the other kind of revolve around. Um, and so for me, my main dominant is I, but I have a secondary of, of D. And so I love relationships until you don't agree with me. <laughs> and then, then we're going to have words. Uh, my wife uh, is a DC, and is your dominant, which one did you come back with a dominant? The M, how about the M graph? The, oh, okay, that's... The L graph, the D is higher. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and so that's that mask, right? And so you, that's, that's just the, the fascinating thing. John, which for you on your L graph? My D is higher. D is higher there as well. In number-wise? Like no, just, just where it is. Higher is C. C is higher on that one. So you portray the D... But really, when it comes down to it, you do want those details, which is that explains the the task list of must that must get done or carry over to the next day. Good. Was anybody surprised by your graph? I don't remember having three above the main midline. Okay. Okay. So you take because you've taken this before and you didn't have three before. That's interesting. Were they far above? Mm, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, I go off the chart. Uh huh. But then um, S because. <laughs> and then D, because I, I'm a pretty good leader, but mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to know that until I got to it. Exactly. So and you'll then, do it, but yeah. yeah. No. That's, and that, again, this is what I love about this. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to flip over um, to your, uh, you know, we've already, on page 13, this goes into a lot of stuff we've talked about, so we're not going to go back into that. But we're going to go to page 14, uh, and 14 through 17 have the blends. So what I want you to do is find your M blend and find your L blend, okay? And then read the little description about it. And it may not be in the exact same order, okay? So you may have to look for that order. You're just looking for the one, two, or three, or four that are above. 